we'll have that up. And they are playing, uh, so let's transition over. Uh, we have Drew Pierce with the white pieces, Dr. Alice, PhD, with the black pieces. Drew Pierce starting out with D4, uh, the queen's pawn. Uh, not a common opening. Uh, Dr. Alice uh, responding with D5. Um, fairly, fairly standard uh, response to D4. Um, bringing out his knight is Drew Pierce uh, to F3. Uh, Dr. Alice likely will... Uh, we'll do the same would be my guess. Maybe pushing that pawn uh, on uh, e7, potentially to e6, and that is what he does. Um, so, uh, as chess.com is telling me, this is the Zuckertort variation of the queen's pawn opening. What that means? Who knows? Uh, Drew deciding to drop his knight right in the middle of... Uh, of everything right there. Um, not not a terrible move, but uh, that could easily get pushed back with uh, um, f6, uh, knight to c6, knight to d7, uh, queen to d6. There's a lot of options that, um, that black has in this situation to just push that knight back. Um, and there's, there's another option, uh, bishop to d6, um, challenging that knight. Now, he doesn't have to move that knight. It is protected by the pawn there on d4. Uh, however, um, he should keep in mind that, you know... Okay, he does drop the knight back. Um, so, I'm guessing that black is just going to continue development here. My guess would be that he'll bring out the knight on f Yep, to f6, uh, and he'll, he is planning on castling next turn. Um, Drew pushing e3, and uh, we should see a castle here from Dr. Alice, would be my guess. He could decide to put his knight up on e4, or try to do something about his black squared bishop, uh, potentially bringing it out onto this diagonal. Um, he does castle, or he could have pushed the pawn here and tried to fianchetto and put it on this long diagonal. Um, I'd like to see development of this bishop, maybe not as far as I had put it, but uh, he decides to bring out his, uh, his second knight uh, out to c3. So, yeah, this could be interesting here. I'd like to see something, like maybe he could bring his bishop here um okay so the other knight comes in for dr alice um an idea for dr alice next turn would be to push this pawn here um and try to trade try to trade off um lots of arrows that a, cu a couple of them didn't make any sense but all right so he does bring the bishop out uh, to b5, uh, putting pressure on this knight, but it's not pinning it. Uh, the king has castled, so um, that knight is free to move if it wants to here. Um, but yeah, I think that this pawn move would be good here, and just trade off some stuff. Um, could also just push a6 and push this bishop back. Uh, bring out this bishop to here. This is a fine move as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that, I think this is looking, I think this is looking good for both sides right now. Good development coming from each. Um, it's just going to be a matter of how are they going to, um, how are they going to break through each other at this point? Um. White does decide to castle. Uh, good move there, um, just to protect his king. Um, now, there is this diagonal here that if black can somehow get into it, um, that's a potentially dangerous diagonal. Uh, but otherwise, the both kings are fairly safe where they are. Um, and this is kind of this is kind of a uh, a hallmark of the queen's pawn opening d4 is that it leads to less exciting games, I guess you could say, um, where 
it's hard to really push forward and find uh, find some sort of opening. Um, and here, uh, pushing pushing the uh, bishop all the way back to b3, Dr. Alice, just trying to get the bishop off of that diagonal. Um, now, kind of difficult to say what to do next. Um, you could go b4 here and put some pressure on that, uh, put some pressure on the knight here uh, and try to force it to move back. Uh, those are its only two options to move back to. Uh, e2 would probably be its best square for that in that case. Um, I could also see him trying to just push this pawn up two squares and put pressure on this, uh, put pressure on the bishop. Um, because if that happens, then the bishop would be trapped there. Uh, decides to go in with his knight here. Um, I don't like it too terribly much. Uh, and the reason why is that they're going to trade off here uh, and double up these pawns here on uh, on the e file. Not really my favorite move, but it's fine. Oh, uh, okay. So I guess this is a matter of what do you do for. I think that you do this first. Put some pressure on the queen. Force him to double up these pawns immediately. But, I mean... Yeah, and that is that is what Dr. Alice decides to do in this situation. That's, uh... Um... Kind of a... Difficult, you know, not so difficult decision, difficult decision, you know, it's hard to say. Um, and he does take back there with uh, with the pawn. Good move there from Drew and not focusing in on what his knight is doing already. Um, yeah, let's, uh, you know, this is this is kind of a interesting move for Dr. Alice. Uh he decides to move his knight uh, instead of trading it off. Uh, he moves it out, um, which kind of leaves his bishop open here. Um, I would have just traded off the knights because that bishop pair, that bishop pair, is very very important here. Um, if I'm Drew, I would take this bishop. Just go for it, really. Um, you could also push a4. You could push e4 now. Yeah, because now e4, you know take there and yeah and a4 a4 is a solid solid move um yeah and there's there's a few there's a few options again that dr alice has he is kind of in a better position right now um i would say I would say to move this bishop back, maybe. Uh, keep it on this diagonal, but you don't want it attacked here. Um, deciding maybe to trade the knight off here. This is a... Uh, although, remember here, that's a... Uh, like, either of these are an option. Hard to... I, I would say probably go with here, because then... Okay, I would yeah I would trade there. Um, uh, yeah, because he takes here, you take back with the queen, and now this is a hanging bishop. So I do not like that move. I don't like that move. Oh, okay. And that's just a free rook. Like straight up, it's a free rook. And Dr. Alice takes the free rook. Black solidly winning now. Um, 
kind of a, I, I would call that a blunder from Drew. He did have a winning move there to, to win a bishop outright and did not spot it. So quite unfortunate for him. Um, so he's going to be climbing uphill the rest of the way, uh, down a full rook. Uh, that was kind of blitzed out. Dr. Alice immediately moving his bishop after the queen moves back to d2. Um, which, that move didn't make a lot of sense, because now that was just a hanging piece, um, in some ways, uh, Although, that's a very hanging piece. That's a very hanging piece. And if he sees that, I think it's probably over. Yeah, and Dr. Alice, yep, he finds it. Dr. Alice blitzed out his last move, which is why he didn't take it. Last move is my guess. He, Yeah, he had pre-moved it. Um... He gets, a, he gets a second opportunity to take that queen, and uh, he does not let that one go. So, I would say probably best move. I would just take here. That's a free free knight. Um, if, I'm, if I'm Dr. Alice, I'm just taking pieces at this point. Just take them all. Um, I mean, you could... Also, actually, probably should move this here, because, uh... Yeah, that queen's kind of just sitting there. Actually, queen here, queen to g5, with ideas to mate here on g2. Uh, decides to go a8 with his queen instead. Um, does at least spot that his queen was under attack. Um... But I don't like this pawn. Okay, uh, that's just a knight for free. And now I don't. Uh, it's hard to say what to do here. Like, yeah, do that, and then this. This is just a trade. Um, yep. That's his only legal move. Uh, I would bring the queen down here and try to get a back rank. White's only move would be to move the king here, probably. I mean, there's a couple moves, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's the best move to avoid a back rank there. He, he also could have pushed one of these pawns. Um, All right, so Dr. Alice looking to potentially get two pieces on the eighth rank here. A uh, scary proposition, for sure. If I am, uh, if I'm, if I'm Drew, I want none of what's going on right now. Uh, so let's uh, let's go over to Dr. Alice, see what he might be thinking here. Uh, with uh, you know, we think we we think he, we know what he's thinking, but let's uh, let's double check, make sure. I can just like move this up, start tearing in, and I guess not there. Okay, open up an escape square for his uh, his fella. That's fine. <sighs> How do I win? You know what I mean. Maybe I should have gone b1, so then I could go here. I can't take there. I want to get this live. Actually, maybe just come out this way. I don't know. I feel like I just kind of, at this point, need to, like, make a move. Because any move I make is going to be so good. I think it's hard to be too uh, incorrect, you know? Um, he has no lines. This still can't move. If the king moves, I get to eat that. Yeah, let's just do that. I, I should have done that last turn, I think. So he decides to move the rook back over to uh, to b8, which, like he said, it's not a 
bad move, but he did definitely have better moves. Um, probably moving this queen in somewhere to uh, avoid something like this. Um, if he had moved his queen to d1, for example, uh, that would have prevented the king from coming to this square. Um, decides to put his... Just be aware that if you can't take back there, um, that is a no-no. I guess if he took back here, that would be a, an option. Um, I'll just take there, put him in check. Uh, and then if he takes it, you bring the, the bishop down, put him in check again, protected here. Uh, yeah, so if he takes there, bring the bishop down, um, protected by the rook. Actually, he can't even take there because it's protected by the queen. So... Um, Goes back there. Um, you could just decide to take this uh, this bishop, which I think is the best move. Um, yeah, taking that bishop would have been the best move in that situation uh, for the reason that he takes with the pawn and then you have a passed pawn. Um not so much of an option now. Uh, actually, yeah, that's still an option. Uh, either that or just moving the queen back to a1, I think. So either, either one of these moves, uh, the computer says are, are mate in 10. Um, decides to bring his bishop in. I don't like that. Because your, your pawn is still stuck here. Your pawn is really, like, going to be very strong in this endgame, potentially. You should be trying to king it. Queen it, sorry. Um, this isn't checkers. This is indeed not checkers. Um, so, queen it, rook it, knight it, fork it. Um... I would move I would move the bishop back up, but uh, my guess is that his thought now is maybe bring the the rook over uh, and bring it down. Um, all right, he's gonna move the queen down instead. Um, Dr. Ellis below three minutes on the clock, but I think he's probably okay here. Um, yeah, I would move this bishop out of the way. Um, maybe rook over. Hard to say what the move. There's a couple of good moves. Queen a2, getting it back onto this diagonal, putting pressure onto the bishop. Um, that's an okay move. I guess his idea is to trade off there, um, which would be good. It would open that line back up for the rook. It's hard to, it's hard to say. There's a lot of lines here Black has a lot of options, um, and as long as he doesn't blunder a piece, uh, Dr. Alice should be winning here um, pretty cleanly. Ah, 12 pings coming from the USL server. <sighs> Okay, so uh, he takes the pawn back uh, that he had. So he pushed up with this pawn. Now takes that pawn after after that trade was declined, uh, and now rook over. I guess. Um, yep. So he does find that. Uh, I guess as he might move this back down here, but yeah, that is what he does. I bring the rook all the way down to a1. 
um, and try to get the queen in behind and try to get some pressure on this king. Dr. Al is, okay. I was about to say below two minutes on the clock, but now back at 201. Um, probably his best move is to move this pawn and try to get an escape this way. Um, moves a different pawn, and now this is mate in one. He's forced to d3, and rook d1 is checkmate. Um, so, because this is covering both of these squares. Queen d2 is also checkmate, um, because it is protected by the pawn here. Uh, he's got a minute and a half to find this. I think he sees that there might be a potential mate here, um, he does find... Queen d2 for checkmate, uh, and Dr. Alice wins game one, uh, so he will only need a win or a draw uh, to move on to the finals. We'll get this board up, and here we go. Uh, Dr. Alice, uh, Drew Pierce. Um, Dr. Alice starting with d4. Uh, haven't seen a lot of d4ers, and we have gotten two of them uh, in, this, uh, in this game here between Dr. Alice and Drew Pierce. Um, Responding with d5, knight c3, or knight f3, sorry. And uh, we're, we're kind of doing the exact same thing that we did last time. Um, this is the exact same opening. Uh, so I guess this is, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see how each player does from the other side. Uh, Drew, uh, differing from, uh, from what happened last game, pushing his bishop out, uh, to g4, um, responding in kind, Dr. Alice putting his bishop right next to it, his light square, or his dark square bishop, rather, uh, onto f4. Drew pushing his, uh, his pawn there in front of, in front of his king out to e6. Um, I do like that he did push his, uh, bishop before pushing that pawn, because now, uh, it's not blocked in by this pawn here, sitting on e6. Uh, same thing goes for Dr. Alice. Now this isn't uh, blocking in his dark square bishop either. Um, so good stuff there. Uh, Dr. Alice bringing out his knight, uh, but bringing it out to d2. I'm wondering if he has an idea of trying to trade off pawns here. Um, now, uh, bringing out his other bishop is Drew, uh, trying to pin uh, the other knight to the king here. Now this can just be push back with c3. Um, instead, he pushes that pawn there, and that's... I think he forgot that the knight is pinned here, because now he takes, and what's his option? Uh, how does he protect this knight? Because he can't move this knight, or, you know, he can't take back here, um, and he doesn't take back. That, that, I mean, this seems very, very obvious for Drew. He doesn't take back, um, and that would have won a knight, really, like, in some capacity. Uh, bringing out his bishop again, this is kind of, you know, a, a, mm. I would push here, push here. Like, one of these two moves is probably best. You can maybe take one of these moves, I think. Um, he does decide to push that pawn in, uh, on e to e5, putting pressure onto the knight here. Um, it, he does not take it. Um, so now that's a pretty free knight, yeah. Um, You can just take there and just put a hole right in front of the king. I, yeah. Yeah, that's a kind of baffling decision from Drew to do it right then. I would have taken back with the queen there. But now you've just got a hole right in front of your king, and it's, this is a very unclear position for, for black. Like, what do you do now? 
he, he brings the queen out, which is, I guess, a good move. This is kind of a just hanging piece right now. Um, not really any way to really protect it, so he's going to have to probably just drop it. I mean, he could put it here. Uh, pin the queen to the king would be a great move because um, it is protected. It would be protected here by this pawn. Um, so yeah, that would be that would be a great move. Um, you could also just take this pawn here. That's just kind of hanging out. Um, in any case, move the bishop somewhere. Uh, but one of these two spots is probably best. Either uh, um, either c7 or e5. Now he could just take back with the knight. That's something that could happen. But he also had his knight protecting there. Um, drops it back to g3. Uh, still continues to have control over this diagonal. So I'm not too worried about this from, from white's perspective. Black, on the other hand, needs to make some plays. And I think the play to start... I don't think it was that. I was kind of thinking trading off here, but I mean, it's 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 just such a such a weird position for Black right now. I don't really like the pawn move though. The king is just so in the open, and now with that pawn move, now it's got nowhere to hide. You know, I can't hide back here. Um, Doctor Alice does find that hanging pawn there on uh, on c7. And I, uh, in any case, you have to move it. I would say moving moving it to one of these squares is probably best. Um, honestly, G three is probably best because at this point, you, you put it there, and and it's just a it's just trading a bishop for a knight. Um, Okay, so he drops it on the other side of the of the knight to protect it, um, which is fine. Uh, but now he loses control of this diagonal potentially. Um, Bishop d6. Uh, I like the idea of because putting pressure onto this pawn on h2. If you can bring your queen down, not particularly there um okay and he does go there uh but be very careful here with this knight this knight is protecting this square uh to keep the queen from getting there um and honestly honestly if i'm black i consider if i, I would consider just trading here putting the queen here just to put some pressure onto that h2 uh pawn And if I'm white, I would probably just maybe push this pawn, try to get that bishop away. Although that could just force him to decide immediately to go with that. Um, I don't know, it's, tr it's a tricky situation. Black could also try to do something like this. Um, and now he's gambiting upon, he's trying to gambit upon, well, it's protected by the knight. Um, but I don't, I don't like that. And the reason I don't like that is now if he does take there, you take back with the knight. And now this knight isn't protected by the other knight. And so this square again is kind of left unprotected. Um, now, is white still winning? Absolutely, but, okay, he brings, he's bringing his rook over, Drew's bringing his rook over, idea is to point down this h file, but this pawn is still in the way, there's not really a good way to get it to move, unless he just straight up pushes it up, which honestly wouldn't be the worst option. 
Um, yeah, and if I'm if I'm white, pushing that pawn, uh, maybe moving the queen out here to try to get some semblance of of a defense onto this uh, uh, onto this third rank. But okay, so he takes the pawn, doubles his pawns, puts pressure onto that uh, onto that knight there on c6. Uh, I would probably just take back, and he does. Now both of these guys have weak pawns sitting here on uh, on the D rank. Uh, you know here. If you look at the pawn structures, uh, nothing supporting these. Uh, nothing on the C or E files. Um, also weak pawns for Drew here on the um, on the F and H ranks because of uh, because of that pawn that he gave away earlier uh, here um, that he took back with his king on. And now we see uh, H3 and oh, I don't like that. That's just giving. That's just kind of. I mean, like it wasn't his. I, I like I like the idea of taking back that that bishop. Um, I think he might have had better moves though, which is weird to think about. I would definitely think about getting this queen out here on b three next move though if he can. Um, and now he can take back here, and now he's got he's got an open rank his. Uh, He's got an open file, H file for his rook, uh, which is potentially extremely dangerous. Especially if Drew can get his queen over, over there somehow. Um, yeah, if he takes back here, you know, queen comes over here, and then idea to bring the queen down here to to H one. I like I like the idea, uh, and he does take the uh, take the pawn back. Um, and now, what do you do in this situation? Uh, computer saying g three, which I do like because that blocks the bishop from protecting uh, from going to this h two square, um, which is right now protected by the rook. Um, It's it's this is a really tricky situation for Dr. Allison. I'm not I'm not even sure if if you know like I would find this. Let's see uh let's see if uh if he sees uh what what we're seeing. I, oh, that's actually terrifying. This open H file is a real problem. Um how do I fix this problem? I can just hope he doesn't see it. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know. Uh, if he goes queen h6, I... I don't know. Or shit, he's got... Okay. Okay. Alright, well, we saw... He, he did uh, end up seeing that idea, but Drew did not see it. He does move his queen out of the way. Um, but now this is... He's got one move here, and that move is to go knight to h3. Um, for for Doctor Alice, this might be a really hard move to see, but it's protecting here, uh, protected here by the pawn. Because um, otherwise, you know, like if he makes the wrong decision here, that's mate. And ooh. Because otherwise, what are his options? You know, you go, it, you can put him in check, but then he just, uh, 
uh, he just takes back there. Um, or you push the pawn to get an escape square. Literally, that's his only real option. And and this is him putting that there is still winning for white. Now, if he took, you know, oh no, and this. Actually, queen h2 is even better because he's not uh, in trouble from the rook. But if Drew sees one of these two moves here to h1 or h2, that that's a scary, scary thing. That's a scary thing for white. And black is, black is winning if he finds this move. If Drew finds this move, he is winning. and instead pushes the pawn, and now... Again, knight to h3 looks like the best move, but now bishop to h5 also opens up to block. Um... Yeah, because bishop h5, you can't take back or you trade off the queens, which, I mean... And he does find that knight move. Uh, so great move here from, from Dr. Alice. Finding this knight move, uh, protecting this h file. And now, you know, the king can't the king can't escape right now because of this pawn. Um, so I mean, he can't take back here or else you take with the pawn. Um, but I mean this this knight is pretty much stuck here right now. This knight has nowhere that it can go. Um, but at least white now has some options uh, to try to find something else uh, that it can that it can run with. Uh, as for black, uh, queen to f6, uh, you know, knight to e7. That's a fine move, too. Um, but... This is, I mean, getting the knight, getting the rook onto this open e file. I, I like the idea of it. Um, however, it's, this just all seems feels very, very unclear for Black. Um, really, he just needs that knight out of the way. But how do you get that knight out of the way? Especially because he doesn't have his light squared bishop anymore. Like, idea to bring it around like this? So white brings his queen over to attack this pawn, which I like. I like that because that does open up the potential escape square for the king, potentially giving it the option of coming back to the middle of the board. Um, black, I would say probably... Rook to e3, protect that pawn. That pawn is very, very important right now. Um, because, you know, that pawn is putting pressure onto both of these squares. Moves it, moves the, he does move that rook, but he moves it down to e7, which... All right, and, and, the, and he does take that pawn back with the queen. Uh, and this is... Uh, it also puts the king in check here. Um, king f8. Probably the obvious move. Um, get him behind the singular pawn over here. But, man, this is tough. Now, keep in mind the time. Uh, Dr. Alice is down below two minutes on the clock. Uh, he's at 148. Drew appears uh, just dropping below four minutes on this turn. Uh, he is at uh, 345. Um, and it looks like he does move the king... He does move the king to f8. Now, it's going to be up to... Um, it's going to be up to, uh, to Dr. Alice to find a way through this. Now, he doesn't have a lot of time. Um, if I'm him, I try, I would probably just try to find good moves, and there's, there's a decent move. I don't think it's great, 
you know, you trade off there. I guess is the idea. Um, but that's, you know, you're... Because mm. because with the with the queen taking there, this is a this is an open bishop, and he just it, he's now in successive turns just moved his rook down one spot each time, um, and so my guess is that he'll just take there, even though that sp space was protected by the the queen. All right, so ideas for the queen to attack this rook. However, again, it's protected by the black queen, so um, something to keep in mind. But Dr. Alice is winning, you know, solidly. He just needs to continue making quick moves. He's down to a minute 27 on his clock. And Oh, no. You missed it. You missed it. And so did Drew. I would just trade it off, honestly. I mean, you could check. Honestly, putting it in check might be the best move. All right, he decides to trade off um, either one of these. That's that's rough because if Drew sees that, if Drew sees that, it's a it's you know like White would still be winning, but it would be a much it would be a much closer game. And now, now this is rough. This is uh, this is rough going for black. Um, I mean, takes on f3 check would have been the best move. And now, I guess knight e2 check. Black's just kind of running scared. And Dr. Alice, one t 110 on the clock. Um, not looking... You know, not looking shabby. He's in good position, but he needs to be able to find a way to finish this off. Uh, maybe maybe bring the knight up there. Maybe bring this rook out. Um, he does decide to bring the rook up, or the knight up and put it put the king into check. Um, and that is a good move. Now, I would put the knight here, um, protect that bishop, um ideas to bring the rook over uh or put this rook or put this bishop somewhere onto this diagonal to protect that that knight so either one of these you know uh he decides to protect the knight and give away the bishop um which if if we're going off of the last game that we saw with drew he just might just not take that bishop at all um, well, not, I mean, his game against JV5 guy, specifically game one against JV5 guy, available uh, on the Meerkat Games YouTube channel. Um, click, uh, you can see below uh, for information for that. And yes, there is the king move after the check. Um, God, I mean, what do you do is black. And now, you know, if you take there, it, your rook's dead. And this is, you know, if I'm Drew, if I'm Drew, I just try to play fast. Don't give Dr. Alice any time to think right now. He's down to 47 on his clock. But Drew is taking a lot of time. Okay, and Dr. Alice pre-moved that, um, taking, taking the rook... Uh, with the knight, uh, giving up his own bishop in the process. Um, he's going to give up another piece here. Uh, king takes on, or doesn't take. Not sure why he didn't take that uh, that knight there. Um, okay, so... White is winning. White's White's in a maintenance four situation. If you play correctly, which might be a little iffy, but um, I mean, he could have just brought out the other rook here. Okay, so he's gonna try to ladder. Um, so that's gonna force him this way. I 
actually his only move is, is KF6, and yeah, he should probably just... Literally, yeah, he pushes a pawn, he just bring that over, and now probably this is the best move because that forks these two pieces. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I would just move the rook up here. Um, move the rook up to f8. Don't even give him the... Uh... Oh, oh, okay, so he decides to protect, but that also cuts off his, his rook there. Um, let's just go... Okay, so he goes rook e6. Yeah, and just a draw here will uh, will seal seal it for um, Dr. Alice at this point. He could just decide to take those pawns, take a stalemate, and that would that would do it. God, I would just yeah. Because if you're if you're if you're white if you're Dr. Alice you won the first game all you need is a draw, literally he takes every piece on the board and he wins, he he moves on so. That's literally all all he needs from this situation. Um, this is this is a rough rough area for uh, uh, for for black here. You know, he takes here, and he's just stuck between these two squares, you know. Um, decides not to take, uh, which, taking this pawn seals the victory. He's going to go for, he's going to go for a, uh, for a ladder, though. Oh, he didn't even need to do that. He could just put the rook there. It's still protected by the king. Uh, yep, and this is mate in one. Can pre-move that out, and Dr. Alice is going to move on uh, to uh, to the finals. So congratulations to Dr. Alice, uh, winning two games to none over Drew Pierce. Uh, well played uh, from both sides.